Good evening, folks. This is Jay from Cold Nights, and you are watching a very special episode of Cold Takes. We have got some special guests tonight. We've got Phil One Ups Collects, and then we've got the weird internet ghost, Mon Gunzu. And we have some things to talk about tonight that we are, we think are hurting the games industry. So uh, I'm going to give you guys a quick second to introduce yourself in case people don't know you, uh, and then we'll get right to it. So, uh, Phil, you got the floor, buddy. Hey everybody, it's uh, Phil of Phil One Up Collects. If you don't know, I have a collection-based channel. I've been kind of slow because I had a lot of stuff going on. I, I also do customer service and marketing for premium edition games. We make physical games for the Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS5. Uh, I'm on Twitter, social, other social media, so that's a little bit about me. And I hope everybody's having a good night. Good deal. Zoo, you got the floor. What's going on? Hey, this is Zoo with Flipping the Switch. I am a strange internet ghost and the last cool kid on the internet. And I guess I'm here to uh, basically talk about uh, some bullshit going on in the games industry. But you can find me on Flipping the Switch, the YouTube channel. Um, I'm basically a random drunk asshole on there that interviews other people. <laughs> and also, <laughs> for what it's worth, um, sometimes I do Nintendo Switch content. Sometimes. When I'm not playing Morrowind or general screwing off so <laughs> good times all right so let's get right to it uh the first topic i want to discuss is the tomfoolery that konami has been up to lately so uh, i'm going to open the the floor with the different subjects here and i'll let you guys go on about them and then i'll put my two cents in at the end uh but let's start with that awful metal gear solid collection um that released very incompletely on the switch and when it was complete on the other consoles, uh, has terrible frame rates and all of that. So, Phil, what are your thoughts on the Metal Gear Solid Collection? Hmm. Well, I would say it's shit. Buy it on the PlayStation 3 or the 360 because literally the collection is on there. Why would you pay $60, $70? For this half-staff attempt. If you were to buy it physically. Wait till it's like 15 or $20. Because for the Switch. You can at least get the old NES. Or Super Nintendo. Uh, Metal Gear games. So there's that. If you want to have a physical copy of that. Uh, but when it comes to the PS4. PS5. You know, uh, the Xbox. <laughs> just like. The collection is only on already on PS3. In fact, there was two of them. There was like an HD collection, and then the Legacy collection is just that with Metal Gear Solid 4 packed in it. So have at it. Like, don't dickery do around with this. Like, that, and that's what I have to say about that. What about you, Zoo? Well, it looks like my non-buying of Metal Gear Solid and playing of Metal Gear Solid will continue because here's the thing, man. Like, I just want to really hold Konami to the fire on this because let's be honest with ourselves. They were able to fit all that, all those games, Metal Gear Solid's 1, 2, and 3, they were able to fit all those on a PlayStation Vita card. All this is, is it is pure and simple. It is lazy lack of optimization by the developers. And what I mean by that is more, we're always told that these new systems, these new specs are for us. I don't believe that shit for a minute. The new specs are for game developers to non-optimize their games. This is how you get ridiculous nonsense shit like the new Call of Duty being 325 gigabytes. It, no, no, it's not. That game's not 325 gigabytes. That game is an unoptimized piece of garbage. They haven't worked to optimize it, to compress, to get that down like is normal. That's what's happening. And it's just one of the many, many things happening in the games industry. Uh, why would we expect our game developers to work harder than they have to, right? So that means it gets put on the shoulders of the consumer. 
So here is a collection of Metal Gear Solid ROMs. You can play the MXX games, which, by the way, the MSX games take up like 1.7 gigabytes. MSX ROMs? Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me right now? So, no, I don't buy it. And, no, I'm not even going to buy it at that because here's the thing. Even if that thing were to go to $1 to $5 in a Bomba bin in a Walmart near you, I still have to look at all those icons for a bunch of fucking games I can't play. So yeah, then you would have to go to Esty and buy like a cover that was like custom made. Yeah, so no, look at that shit. no, I'm gonna pass. <laughs> I'm I'm going to just say that Konami is gonna Konami because Konami is the absolute worst. And I actually think that in a just world, Konami's properties would be seized and handed over to Capcom. <laughs> I'm done with Konami. So, so my two cents on this is that Konami has a rich history of badly botching these collections. If you remember, the Silent Hill collection uh, was terribly optimized, and they basically ruined the games on it. Um, so th this isn't the first time this has happened, uh, and it won't be the last time. And my main concern here is not just with Konami, but what this means for the bigger picture. And I feel like a lot of the issues we're having with these collections, like we had with the Final Fantasy collection, like we're having here, whether it's how they're marketed, how they're sold, or how they turn out like this, is that they set nasty precedents for the future of the games industry and for the future of collecting. And I think they only hurt all of us, no matter what kind of collector you are in the long run. And I think they will hurt the game industry too, because as we're repeatedly force fed this absolute garbage, right? People are still buying it, unfortunately. And I know we've had this discussion on Discord where people buying it because they have this fondness and nostalgia for it. Like, I get that. And I won't say that I didn't buy like the Sonic collection they had put out and stuff, but. I do think unless it's something you really, really want, and if you really, really want it, I can't judge you. But if it's something you're on the fence about, please choose to not consume this, right? If if Metal Gear Solid is your thing and you have to have every Metal Gear Solid thing, go ahead and buy it. I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money. Put it on your shelf. That's awesome. But if you have any reservations, turn away from this because it's hurting us. You guys agree? Yeah, yeah. But um, I want to add that it's it's interesting how we get a lot of these collections, right? But as time goes on, they're worse. Like, how can you do it right on the PS3 and the 360 multiple times with this HD collection and then the Legacy collection, but then you screw it up with the next generation? Like, I don't, I don't get that. Like, as time goes on... <laughs> collections that used to be on the disc are no longer on the disc they're big dlc codes they have a bunch of glitches and problems and issues that wasn't present on this and it's like i i i just i don't understand how you can constantly take old games and screw it up if you lost the source code like with silent hill i understand that okay i understand that which you're dumbass for losing the source code but I get it. Right. But if it's something you still have the source code for and you put it out multiple times and you did it right, how can you F it up after doing it right so many times? You know better. You well, know with the, with, better. With like, the Silent Hill up. thing, with the Silent Hill thing, I would say that you lost the source code and you see how that project is going. It just shouldn't have been released. They shouldn't have done it. Yeah. Also, it kind of gives lie to this whole idea. Again, they, they keep pushing that, hey, you know, if you give us, you know, what what is the proposition for adopting new hardware? They tell us constantly, whether it's the SNES going to the N64, the N64 going to the GameCube, so on and so forth. If you give us better, beefier hardware to work with, it allows us to give you guys and deliver you guys a better product with a better game, and it doesn't happen. So it's just every generation to me, I love it. I love it because it shows the lie. It shows the lie of better hardware equals better games. Now, theoretically, they're not wrong. 
But let's. But one of the things that I will I often argue is that better hardware is actually holding video games back. Sven Vic, who just made Baldur's Gate three, probably going to win game of the year, just made the point that the problem is like if you look at a game like Ultima Seven, a game that still does things to this day that modern games, even Baldur's Gate three, is like we we fell short of doing some of the interactive things you can do in a game from frickin' nineteen ninety two. And he said, the reason why is if you tried to make Ultima 7 and you tried to make it with all of the high-end graphics, HD visuals, 4K, full 3D open world, you couldn't make the game because it's too expensive. You can you can do it, but you will bankrupt your company to do it. So going to higher graphics, higher fidelity, 3D HD models, that has actually set gaming in terms of the things that gaming can do, the tool set available to gaming, it set us back. Yeah, And it's not just me saying that, it's developers saying that, saying, hey, there's all kinds of cool ideas we want to do, but we'll go bankrupt trying to do them. It's why you'll you'll never see an Ultima 7 again. You'll never see an Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind again, ever. I mean, it, it, you can see it. Um, and I, I watched a, a video recently where he was kind of talking about it, but you can see it, like even the cracks in Sony's way of making interactive movies, which is really what they are. They have these action set pieces and they look really cool. Right. And if you're watching it, it's like a movie because mm-hmm. my baby niece, Everly, she's four right she loves spider-man and when she wants to watch spider-man she wants to watch the gameplay of the new spider-man 2 game she's watching it like it's a movie right yeah just man to her, it those, it's yeah. literally a movie and all you do it, it, like the first game we never really experienced that in quite a long time so it was like boom for your brain but the sequel is just more of the same with a few new additions but not enough new additions to make it truly unique so whereas it might be cool and it might sell really well it doesn't necessarily mean that it's uh this amazing experience right. it's all, all flash more of the same and all, all flash yeah. and and after a while of doing that again and again and again you get stagnated by it it's like it's like with the marvel cinematic universe or the walking dead series it got old after the what first if, few seasons, you forgot about it. You didn't care anymore. It's funny you mention that, Phil, because one of my favorite things on Twitter I've seen in a long time, Juice Man Vaughn, and if you don't follow him, you should. He's, he's great. He just put out a thing called Popcorn Ass Games, and it's literally a – it's just a it's just a compilation of the new Horizon Zero Dawn game, the new God of War Ragnarok, and Spider-Man 2. And all it is is it just shows like all the different ways you juggle them and the cinematic camera angles while you fight. And it, every one of those games, you, you could literally copy and paste them. It, it's incredible to watch. Like, yeah. and he just call that's why he calls them these popcorn ass games. He's just cinematic games. So, <laughs> speaking about interactive movies, my next concern with Capcom, I don't know uh, if any of the listeners are familiar with this. Uh, Silent Hill Ascension recently dropped, and um, it is basically. All right, let's break this down. It's an interactive web series of um, basically movies. And so, okay, that might be kind of cool, right? You could experience some cool Silent Hill stuff in movies, right? Uh, It has a battle pass, a paid battle pass, which includes like chat stickers and chances to play extra puzzles to get points so you can vote on the outcome of the next installment of the series which i guess they're going to release periodically you can also pay real money to buy more votes so you can choose whether this person fights the monster or kills this person so now we have taken we have taken the monetization that you have of something like fortnite and put it into an interactive web series that has no gameplay at all It's literally a mobile app that you vote on and watch this on. This is (laughs) unbelievable. And I am one of the biggest fanboys of Silent Hill ever. And to see this shocks me to my core. And it terrifies me for what's going to happen with a Silent 2 remake, Silent Hill 2 remake, 
and what's going to happen with that Silent Hill F game. As cool as they both looked, if we're doing this kind of shit, I'm honestly not really sold anymore. I downgraded Silent Hill to Remake from a day one purchase to a let's wait and see, because I'm honestly not sure. And my other concern with that is that we are how close and how far in the development cycle, and we've seen nothing but that original trailer. Something is amiss. Um, But yeah, what are you guys' thoughts on Silent Hill Ascension and the upcoming Silent Hill 2 remake? Well, I got to tell you, um, having just finished Silent Hill 2, it kind of disturbs me greatly, but I can't say I'm super surprised because it's it's the deflation of the product. You know, it's deflationary cycle of the product. Essentially, it, it, once again, it's it's laying bare to another one of these lies. The lies we were always told by game developers is, hey, with the inflation going up, it's getting harder and harder to give you a quality physical product. We have to press the game. We have to make cases for the game. We have to stamp manuals for the game. We have to ship the game, somebody has to drive the game out, and somebody has to stock the game onto the retail market. If you give us digital, one, we can give you, we can pass prices on to you and be more competitive in pricing. And two, we can deliver a better product because we can save costs on the manufacturing. But this is a lie. How do I know this is a lie? Because the deflationary cycle of gaming has continued. It hasn't stopped just because games aren't physical. So Like, look at it, for example, one of the things I like to tell people is, uh, you know, um, even if they go 100% digital, which we're seeing, where do you get your money then? They're not going to be happy. Do they raise the price? No, they're already they're already selling you digital games at sixty dollars. So now we're chunking the game up into DLC. We're doing these predatory monetary practices that you're talking about right now, and so it's the continued deflationary cycle of the game product it's very disturbing although i wouldn't say it's surprising and at the end of the day once again it's i just want to point out to gamers that you're being sold a big fat bill of goods and you're all buying it well the crazy thing with the deflation and devaluation of games thing is with silent hill ascension we've just cut out the fucking gameplay yes like 100 monetized <laughs> cutscene. 100 like, you, you don't even need a fucking controller just have your fucking <laughs> iPhone and your Android yeah, and, and vote. And, and in terms of Silent Hill 2, um, I'm just going to leave it as short of this. When I saw that they were remaking Silent Hill 2, now this is before I really had a lot of experience with, with Silent Hill 2, but I wasn't super excited because my thoughts is the same thing when I saw that, oh, they're doing a Ghostbusters remake. Oh, look at that, a fucking Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is a perfect movie. Ghostbusters does not need to be remade. Having played Silent Hill 2, I will also say Silent Hill 2 does not to be remade. It does not need to be remade. Um, I'm sick of this. Um, and and I think the more I used to be very, very angry at Miyamoto when he used to say, I've made that game before. I don't want to make that game again. But the more I think about it, and as I play through Mario Wonder, the more I'm starting to think, you know what? Miyamoto was right to say, I've made that game before. I don't wish to make that game again. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, a person who is a creative and is a true talent wants to make new things. It is a loser mentality to want to remake something over and over and over and over again. Bill, what are we thinking about the Silent Hill controversy? Well, I think it's complete shit. (laughs) <laughs> shiitake mushrooms shiitake one-up mushrooms seriously like i i almost wonder if konami is like oh all those uh streamers love those kind of uh walking simulator horror games or Great point. they watched until dawn and they were like okay we need to do this but it needs to be streaming only and no gameplay and that's no no i'm not no dissing until dawn or, or any of those like it but those are like really sort of you know kind of playable movies in a way and we really are just stuck in this playable movie and now they're taking the playable part of it now it's literally just watching it just just watching it and then you're <laughs> selling people dlc for like emotes and shit like what this isn't gaming anymore 
This 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 isn't gaming anymore. What the hell is this? Why why do you like, think I got out of the hobby for twenty years? Gaming that is not even an art form. There is nothing artistic or creative about that. That is just shit, shit on a big fat platter. Like that's all it is. And I'm like, that is a disgrace to Silent Hill. Just like Metal Gear Survive was a disgrace to Metal Gear. Like Konami, <laughs> you you wouldn't give us the uh, PT as a full game, but you'll put out something like this. this no, they shit? literally took the PT trailer down. The, the, I know the, the like, assholes is, literally like... took it away from us. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. Now this I makes me them. very very <laughs> scared for Silent Hill to remake, and I it, we're also getting to the point where remakes are just getting too prevalent. It's starting to get oversaturated and it's starting to get like roll your eyeballs really hard at it and sigh because it's like it's going to become watered down. It's going to be overdone. And it's going to be half assed the more they continue on with it. So yeah, I don't go, know. Go, I, go, I, make, I, go make some new art loser. That's all I have to say to these people. And my thing is also <laughs> worrying about the remake. How much are they going to take out? Because Angela's story involves sexual assault and rape eddie's story involves extreme bullying and obviously like it ends in murder um and james mercilessly kills his wife because she won't fuck him anymore like well if i if i remember right jay there were trigger warnings and content warnings on the dead space remake which wowed me like uh, so yeah. i'm i'm really worried what will get taken out because angela's story without being sexually abused by her father is not an entertaining story. She'd just be a crazy person. But with that in the story, it makes her story tragic and awful, and it makes it more meaningful. Um, with Eddie, if he's not bullied, what is the reason that he's a psychopathic killer? Like, those things are important to that story. And especially the thing with James. The whole story is about James' repressed sexuality and that he couldn't handle the fact that Ma like Maria is the whole essence of that. Mm -hmm. That when Mary was sick, she could not be intimate with him, and she could not handle having a sick spouse. And he ends up goddamn killing her. And sorry for spoilers, folks, but I assume if you're watching the Cold Takes podcast, you know what happened in Silent Hill Two. <laughs> <laughs> but well, without those extremely strong and possibly triggering themes, how can that story be effective for someone experiencing it for the first time? And I've, how effect will it lose for someone like us who's experienced the it, original story? Social media has just gotten where everybody is so easily offended. I, I, snowflakes, literally just snowflakes everywhere. And it, it's affecting all forms of entertainment. And it's stifling creativity to where people are too afraid to put out their their dream idea or their dream game or their dream movie and you got hollywood and all the big people the corporate things up the ladder going no you can't do that you can't do this you can't do that and i'm like stop it just let people put out what they want just do something you want stop trying to ruin things or remake things because Honestly, if it was perfect the first time, you remaking it isn't going to really make it better. Exactly. It's not going to be the same as the original. It I mean, be. and it's not going to replace the original. It won't ever replace the original. And if that's what you're trying to do, stop it. The original Resident Evil games, they still matter. I don't care if the graphics might look old and ugly to you because you're too busy on your Fortnite. I don't give a <laughs> damn. It's still relevant. It still matters. And it's still... A timeless classic. So well said. I just I, I'm just so sick of it all. It's and, so and stupid. I'm certainly I'm not someone who would ever be little the experience of someone that's like an essay a survivor or or someone that may be triggered by these things because of their past. But yeah, what I'm yeah, saying of course. is if 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 that stuff's happened to you, maybe you shouldn't play a game about this. Yes. Like to me, well, that would be the discretion. Like I would suggest that if you are triggered by that. Don't play games like this, but I'm well, and, and the other I thing. think that that makes the story more potent and impactful. Yes, so I would prefer to go on a system where we warn certain people, which is what the rating system is for, to mm -hmm. avoid a game and let those of us that maybe don't have those sensitivities uh, enjoy it for the impactful and potent experience it is. 
Well, there's also something to be said. A lot of people are raising concerns about how Bluebird Team handles mental illness in general. And I can't comment on that because I've never played a Bluebird Team game, but apparently there's a lot of people who have played their games and who love Silent Hill, and they're just like, a psychological horror game like Silent Hill 2, which delves very deeply into the mental problems of people, I don't know if this is the studio. I don't know if these are the ones for that. A lot of people have said that because they're just they they they. they it's kind of like a caveman clubbing style of tackling mental illness instead of the more subtle nuances that Silent. Yeah, Hill I would definitely that. say that having played through most of Medium, that it's definitely like a head-on. Okay, it's not something subtle. Like I, I'm not one of those people that hates the Medium. I enjoyed the game. Sure. Um, but it is definitely not. It's very similar in presentation and atmosphere mm -hmm. to Silent Hill, but it is definitely not the same substance. Well, at least we'll supposedly get to play as Pyramid Head and get an origin story for him because we all fucking need that, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, that'll be great. Um, you know, like some origin stories are cool, like the Maria one that was originally included with the Xbox version of the game. Born from a Wish! But... It's also in the Greatest Hits. It's yes. in the greatest uh -huh. hits right. copy on the PS2, which I but have. But I'm not so there. sure that uh, a, a pyramid head playable part is what the doctor ordered. Um, so we're going to have to go to break <laughs> here. Uh, and when we come back, we will continue uh, the video game uh, rage. Uh, so we'll be right back with Phil 1-Up Collects and the weird internet ghost, Mangatsu. Woo! <laughs> he doesn't see me right there. We gotta get him to run. We gotta get him to come over to the table. He can gain some pretty good speed too. See, look at that—that that terrifying speed walking bastard, like Michael Myers. Oh my God, there's two. Oh Jesus, I'm done. Oh, run! <laughs> wow, that was pretty terrifying. Yeah, this is like too much. I love the eyes. Uh -huh. Oh my god, he's still right there. Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, I'm done. Hey guys, this is Jay from Cold Nights, and we are back for the second half of the Cold Takes podcast, where we are breaking down the sorry state of the game industry at this time. Uh, we still have our special guests, Phil One Up and Mongan Zoo, and we're going to jump right into it uh, with the controversy over the PS5 Slim. So, um, we'll start with Zoo on this one. Zoo, what is going on over at Sony? Uh, well, what's going on over at Sony is uh, you'll own nothing and be happy. <laughs> this is what happens uh, when we sell our property rights down the drain for convenience's sake, you know. Um, I also have to say gamers pretty much have one of the worst cases of Stockholm Syndrome I've ever seen. Um, but the more I read into domestication process and the more I learn about it, the more I come to believe that I don't want to target gamers in particular because it's not their fault. They are being targeted with a monumental domestication effort that has been ongoing since essentially the first fucking horse armor packs got sold back on the 360 and PS3. So it's on one hand, gamers really need to exercise their right to walk away from bad bargains. On, uh, on the other hand, who am I to say that they just don't like this, all this dumb shit. And maybe I'm just a fuddy duddy who's getting ready to exit stage left and they can, they can have this uh, just like the day of Lavos when, they were left with uh, no food, but machines that would fill them up, but never nourish them. If that's the fucking world they want to live in as gamers, hell, knock yourselves out, champ. Who am I to take that away from you? But in case you guys aren't aware, um, in case you've been living under a rock, uh, with the launch of this new uh, PS5 Slim, um, apparently, no matter which version you go with, um, right. You cannot initiate the console or the disk drive without being connected to the internet. Is that correct, gentlemen? Yes. Yep. Yep. You will own nothing and you will be happy. And so, Phil, what do you think that means for the future of our console and gaming ownership? 
Well, I think uh, we're in, uh, we're teetering over the edge. We're literally in a shit storm and everybody's having their mouth open and they're like, thank you so much, Microsoft and Sony. Thank you so much. And uh, Mario's about to just jump right over in there if things continue on. Hopefully Nintendo doesn't join in on this shit bandwagon, but slowly you are starting to see that happen. And I got a couple of rant videos I haven't dropped. I haven't had time to edit them. But it's like 20 minutes worth of each to go through. And Dude, we're at the Alamo. Get those out eventually. Uh, I was about, I was going to, uh, I was wanting to talk more about this because it really, it really upsets me. And I recently saw a unboxing for the PS5 Slim that my friend shared with me, right? And it looks like shit. Okay, it's the plates because there's four of them, right? There's four of them now. Some of them are glossy, like cheap glossy pa pa uh, plastic, and the other are matte. It, it looks really shitty. And then, uh, then when it comes to the disk drive attachment, there's no screws to hold it in. It's literally one little clip. If that clip breaks off, there goes your disk drive attachment. I was like, that is such a shitty, cheap disk drive <laughs> attachment and way to hold on to it. And then maybe that's what they want. Maybe you want they want you to buy like five or ten of these because oh damn, the tab broke. I can't hold it in my console anymore. But with the internet connection thing, it's so so garbage. And they're discontinuing the uh, the the original PS5. And I don't even have one yet, so now I feel pressure to run out and get one. And I don't like to do that. I don't like to feel pressured into something because scalpers will buy up those other ones and then I can't get it. And uh, it just sucks because it's it's so expensive, expensive hardware, and there's so many issues. And I just don't like this all digital direction we're going I don't like seeing Sony abandon their identity to become a westernized Sony soft. They're literally becoming Microsoft. <laughs> and it's soft. all because Microsoft Sony has convinced soft. everybody that Game Pass is a great idea. No, Game Pass is killing physical game media. We're already, we, streaming services have killed physical movies and television shows. That's why Best Buy is getting out of it. So we're literally seeing physical media die because everybody's like, it's such a good deal on paper. But what are you sacrificing? What are your you ownership. giving up in the long run? Your ownership. Yeah, you're sacrificing your ownership. And my concern would be that when all is said and done and the eventuality of a full digital uh, game media ends up happening, um, are they going to pull the rug and the plug on things like PS Plus and Game Pass, and then we'll just be back to buying every single game for the full price? I'm very worried about some of the business practices we're going to see at play in the next oh, yeah. ten years. Because once they have, once they have us uh, wrapped around their finger, which it looks like we're getting closer and closer to that, um, they can really, literally do whatever they want. Exactly. Every... And I see so many people, they're just like, it's not a big deal. Everybody has internet. I point <laughs> Not to everybody the... has high quality ice internet. I'm one of them. I'm one yep. of them. I struggle all the time. Y'all don't understand how hard I struggle when it comes to uploading content. Jay knows. Zoo knows. It's it, a pain in the ass. It, to it play games to... online with people is a pain in the ass because it's like, oh, my friend's like, I downloaded it in five minutes. I'm over here waiting two hours. And then when it runs like shit because I'm stuttering all over the place and I get disconnected, do you think that makes my friends happy to play with me? No. They're mad. They're angry. And I feel bad for it. So don't give me that bullshit that everybody has internet. Until internet is fair for everyone everywhere at a fair price... It's not it's not good that we go in all digital age because we're not there yet. But Microsoft is pushing us there. They're accelerating it. Maybe this would have happened in another 10-ish years, 15 maybe. Now it seems like it's going to happen in the next five. I don't even want to see what the PS6 is going to be like. Why am I not? Xbox. 
Why am I not surprised that it's always Microsoft at the forefront of this shit? Story time, real quick. So, I when I I been I was a Super Nintendo boy and a Sega Genesis boy, and I decided and basically I started my exit in the N sixty four era, and literally sat out the entire GameCube, Xbox, PS two era, and without the Wii, would have set out the PlayStation 3 360 era. I will never forget going to a friend's house, and he had an Xbox 360, and we were there to play uh, Dead or Alive 4 and uh, Halo. That was what we were there to play. And I'll never forget him trying to open up his disk drive. This is a newish 360, right? It's like a year in. And him trying to open his disk drive, and the disk drive wouldn't open up. It would click, but it wouldn't pop open. And so he's like, hold on. He's like, this happens a lot, man. And he kept clicking it. He'd click it fast to try to get it to kind of trick it into opening. And then finally, what he would do is this this Xbox 360 was laid on its side. And he would pick the, the uh, head end of the 360 up off the ground, hold it up about two inches, and drop it on the floor while hitting the button at the same time to get the disk drive open. Wow. And I remember laughing at that. It's like, see, yeah, it just takes a moment. I'm like, you stupid bastards. Like, this is what I'm missing out on. This is the generation. That, no wonder I've left. You sorry son of a bitches. <laughs> like, why is it that hard to just go find other hobbies when you're being treated this way? And apparently the answer with a lot of gamers is, yeah, it's real hard to find other hobbies. So speaking of, of Microsoft, the next thing I wanted to cover is this outrageous announcement that they are going to stop the support through the consoles for unauthorized accessories. Insane. Uh, so, so that could be uh, wired or wireless controllers from a third party. Um, and people might say, OK, but that's not a big deal. Um, you know, who doesn't have an Xbox controller? But my concern, all right, is that as someone who was once very active in the fighting game community, um, people that have specialized controllers like fight sims, fight pads, arcade pads, people that enjoy um, like your uh, fighter jet simulators, people that enjoy playing racing games, and they have very expensive four or $500 setups that have throttles and steering wheels and gas pedals, those are all unauthorized. There's not like an official Xbox um, gas pedal and wheel. There's not- And an if there was, it'd be stupid expensive. It'd right. be like four times the price. There's something. not an official Xbox like jet fighter setup. So mm -hmm. I have a severe concern with some of the expensive peripherals that people use. And I've heard the excuse, oh, well, they're doing this to combat cheating through like the Cronus Zen. And I'm like, that's a fucking, okay, so- Cop out. Guys, I used to be a competitive player in both the fighting game community and MLB The Show, the baseball game that came out every year. And there was always rumors that people were cheating using the Cronus Zen, blah, blah, blah. I don't think I ever came across that. All I ever saw was yep. like weird posts online. Now, maybe some people are doing it, but they almost want to make it sound like it's like endemic in the communities. And it's absolutely not. So it, it, if it really is true that Microsoft is going to do this to combat one cheating device or one type of cheating device, and you're going to sink all these other ships and companies to do that, that's in itself stupid. But I know that this is just out of corporate greed. It's so that you will only buy their product or the products that these other companies have now had to sign up for a deal that I'm sure is sweet for Microsoft will provide. Please, please listen to me, gamers, when I tell you as somebody in business, it's always no big deal. It's always no big deal. Everything, everything that you've ever been, everything that you, you're a little frog in a pot of slowly boiling water and every increase in temperature is no big deal. It was no big deal when they sold you horse armor. It was no big deal when they started putting holes in the fucking boxes so that they didn't have to put as much plastic in there to ship. It was no big deal when they started doing manuals. I hear it's no big deal to justify every shitty practice this industry has ever done. And I'm here to tell you that this is how domestication works. Think about your job. Every single person here, listening or otherwise, has had some kind of a job. Now, where where is the origin of job? Job 
actually comes from the root word gob, which is what peasants used to do for money. That's where job comes from. Every time you'll have your, your boss or your master or whoever is coming up to you and he'll say to you, he'll say, hey, got to add something more to your plate. I got to I got to have I got to tweak your your workflow, your work process here, but it'll only take a few minutes. No big deal. All of a sudden, there's nine or 10 or 11 or 12 or 15 of these things. It was no fucking big deal. And now they're stacking up and now you're feeling it. So anybody who is telling you, any gamer who tells you, if you have a genuine concern and they tell you, oh, it's no big deal, that is your enemy. Mm -hmm. That is your enemy, and that is an mm -hmm. enemy to this hobby. So you mm -hmm. need to understand that. It's always no big deal. And it shocks me how many stands there are for uh, you know PlayStation and Xbox. It's crazy how many people do And Nintendo. Practices. Like, and Nintendo. It's just it's ridiculous. Like, stop. All of them. Stop. You can be a fan without being a fanboy or a fangirl. I know that might not. be hard to believe, but you can. Being a true fan is supporting them when they do something right and holding them accountable when they do something 100%. wrong. 100%. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand this, you're 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 fooling yourself because I they agree, are not 100%. your friend. And they don't care about you past the money that you give them. You got to understand that we, as consumers, have all of the power. The companies can't do anything if we don't let them. But 100%. they're fooling you to think that, well, this is just how it has to be. Mm -hmm. No, it has. It's this way because we let it. They they tried to take an inch and we just we ignored it. And now they're taking like the whole damn road. OK, and it has to stop. It has to stop. We are at the edge where we can still do something. But if we don't in the next five, maybe 10 years, physical media is gone. And I know people have been saying that for a long time. But look at the writing on the wall. Dude. We are All these consoles are becoming digital based, a shitty disk drive attachment that requires an Internet connection. Game Pass is Microsoft's original vision with the Xbox One just altered to make it look like a really good deal. Um, I also want to give a quick addendum to this, too, in terms of coming at this from a retro gamer. Um, go, go find me a working, brand new Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo first party controller. Go find me one. As somebody who owns over 200 Super Nintendo games, go find me one. Tell me how much it costs. So you they can say all they want. Uh, it's not a big deal. It's just a third-party controller. Tell me it's not a big deal in 20 years when you want to play on that system and the first-party controllers are 300 fucking dollars. Well, also don't forget, uh, there was a couple people in the Discord that had actually worked at GameStop, and they had experience uh, dealing with customers that maybe didn't have quite as much money. And there, I was told by multiple former employees that they actually had quite a few younger people and people that just didn't have the cash that for a secondary or replacement controller, all they could afford was the GameStop one. Yeah. They and, could and, only afford yeah. 20 or $30. They couldn't afford uh, the 60 or $70 that all three companies charge for their wireless let, controllers, let, which let's is just obscene. Talk about, let's talk about how crazy that is. That a game controller from Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo costs as much as a damn game yep. like more, that more. is insane more, what more the hell is that for joy, -Con, or for joy cons yeah. if you get the fancy ones with all the attachments jo the joy cons are more in the yeah. freaking yeah. tickle my nipple buttons or whatever the hell they put <laughs> what, on what's a joy con it's like 70 <laughs> fucking dollars like i know yeah, I and it's, it's cheap plastic mm. and it has drift because they never fix the drift you know they didn't like it's the worst controller. It is the and it doesn't even have an actual fucking D pad because of the dual design. I hate the Joy Cons, and this isn't a Switch fanboy. Like I love the Switch, hate the Joy Cons, hate them. But yeah, it, it never ceases to amaze me how how small the minds of so many of these gamers are. They're just not future proofed. If 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 Nintendo, if the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis had done what Microsoft's doing now, there would be no retro gaming community on the Super Nintendo in the Sega Genesis. There would be none because you couldn't find a controller for them. Those things wear out, they die, and Nintendo stopped making the Super Nintendo controller in 1998. 
They're it, all gone. It, it's so crazy that they say that consoles are like PCs now. Well, if they're like PCs, why don't they have all the freedom that PC has instead of all the restriction? Like a closed ecosystem, digital prices are as much as physical games, which is batshit crazy. And it just like you can't use all these mods. There are so many cool mods that give rejuvenation to old games. You can literally play an old game for Morrowind. 10 years. Yeah, yeah. 20 like years. Morrowind. Yeah. You can still years. play that old game and you get new content. You don't get any of that on consoles. None of it. And I used to be a, a console purist where I was like, PC yeah, is just people they're acting like they're better than everybody. But well, really, they do, to be fair. They have, yeah, yeah, and they do, but they have so much freedom. So let me ask you, what if PC gamers woke up tomorrow and their ecosystem was like consoles? Like they had to pay to play online. They would lose their F in mind, wouldn't they? Oh, well, yeah, for sure. Microsoft is trying to do it with Game Pass and PlayStation now. Yeah, and but, but P- like, PC hey, gamers will literally just make a mod and it'll work right around it. You can't do it yeah, to PC gamers. But, but but the thing is, like, they're, they're trying to push that. They're trying to they're get trying. you to really invest in these things. And you have to you have to have your eyes wide open. Because if you don't, they're going to walk all over you and you're going to thank them for it. That's what's going to happen. The the thing the developers are going to run into, they're going to run into a hell of a of a trap on PC because the thing of it is, is like these dudes are dorks, man. They are the the video game companies may be smarter than than console gamers. They're not smarter than these egghead dorks that are on PC gaming. And I'm not talking about me because I just play the mods. I'm talking about the the mm-hmm. dudes who literally reverse engineered Morrowind and created an open Morrowind engine for that game. Like, you are never going to be smarter than those people. They will always outsmart you. So good luck with that. But they can try, and and they will. All (laughs) right, so now I want to move on um, to uh, something I've kind of been uh, itching about, and that's, you know, we all very much so talk glowingly about Nintendo, um, but Nintendo is guilty of a couple things that I feel are hurting uh, the future of game collecting, especially in the physical realm. Um, So one of my concerns, and again, this is one of those things that sometimes is a nasty little thing wrapped in gift wrap for you. Um, So I want to talk about Nintendo's game vouchers. So for those of you that aren't familiar with it, for $99.98, you can get two vouchers for full priced digital Nintendo games, which means you would save $10 each. But to me, this is a way to ease us into digital gaming taking over. What do you guys think? Do you think this is nefarious? Do you think it's a great deal? Uh, do you have concerns about it? But we'll start with you, Zoom. Yeah, I don't use them, and I don't use them for exactly that reason. And um, it absolutely is doing exactly what we're talking about. This is boiling the frog. This is domestication strategy. Essentially, what they're doing is um, they're just presenting you with what appears to be a good deal. And by the way, it's not that good of a deal. It's 10 fucking dollars per game. It's really not that good of a deal, guys. Second of all, it's just one of a a multi-pronged front. Like, Nintendo has honestly pissed me off um, in many ways throughout their history, going back to the fact that they didn't allow for an account system until relatively recently. So I lost access, and that, that was my heel turn on digital gaming was buying all these Wii digital games and not being able to transfer them to the Wii U. That was my heel turn. And so it doesn't surprise me at all that Nintendo is doing this. Um, They're doing it with the vouchers. They're doing it with their weird fucking Nintendo Online expansion pass where Mario Kart, oh, here's some of the courses, but not all the courses, or here's Animal Crossing, but here's this whole other village you only get with the expansion pass. It's doing it with games like F-099, for example. Um, and it's absolutely, Nintendo is absolutely slowly pivoting toward a, uh, to a, to a subscribe to play model. Um, you're never going to own those Mario Kart tracks. Um, you have to have it as a paid download, which is attached to the console or as a subscription. That's where all Nintendo multiplayer games are going. Um, next, uh, for example, Mario Striker DLC is going to be kind of subscription based in the next game. Um, Switch Sports, for example, the Golf is not immediately on the disc. 
Um, that's the way Switch um, sports, that's the way these multiplayer games are going to be done on Nintendo. You cannot ever own it. Like, um, Rush Dog was making a great point, which is that, yeah, is Smash Brothers Ultimate playable on the disc? Yeah. But if you don't, if you if, if you don't have the downloadable content and some of the patch updates on that, which they've never released, you will never get the quote unquote finished version of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. It's literally impossible. And so that's the way they're they're not forcing it like caveman clubbing style, like these mm. other two uh 4K twins are doing, but they're doing it in a much more subtle and a much more surreptitious way, I feel sometimes. And at what point do we consider uh, something like the way they're handling Mario Kart and Smash Brothers to be almost games as a service. Um, definitely, if it wasn't for the fact that it still has local multiplayer, and I don't think they will. I don't think the next games will. Um, you're slowly seeing that cut out. I think Splatoon, which I do love Splatoon, but Splatoon was kind of their big experiment into the games as a service model. And it's largely been a very big success for them. I think they're seeing the success of Splatoon, and I think slowly but surely they're going to be like, hey, what do, what the hell do we need multi, uh, local multiplayer for? You know, we'll save on the development cost of that. We'll put it into the live service model, and uh, we'll just uh, we'll just nickel and dime gamers to death. We'll 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 treat this like the the day after Lavos. Just like I definitely I definitely fear that something like Smash Brothers or or Mario Kart in its next iteration uh, could have a battle pass or something like it's, that. It's going to be a subscription service. Yeah, yeah, it, it absolutely will be. Um, Nintendo Nintendo always telegraphs the future console with their late game content. So all of the stuff they're putting out right now, they're telegraphing and they're telling you what their future is going to be. F-099 is absolutely foreboding of the future of Nintendo, just like Mario Wonder is, um, which is good. Um, just like a lot of what's going on with these battle passes, things of that nature. Nintendo, does, I've watched it every generation. The uh, the Wii U, the shitty direction of the Wii U was telegraphed with games like Wii Music and Metroid Other M and fucking Skyward Sword and Mario Galaxy 2. And this is going to show us what Nintendo Switch's future is with their current software. Bill, what do you think about what Nintendo's been doing? I mean, I've got a love-hate with Nintendo as well. I think they do some awesome things right, and they do some really messed up things. Um, I I really hope, whatever the next generation is, I hope they give a lot of quality of life improvements. Um, <laughs> if they're going to be charging for online, you need to be having the basic functions like dedicated yeah. party chat. Like, <laughs> what the heck is that? Like, use your cell phone and connect to some bullshit app in order to talk to somebody when playing Mario Kart? Really, Nintendo? Really? And, uh, I mean, the voucher thing, that is such a crappy thing. Like, $40, so $10 off? Nintendo physical games hardly ever go on sale. Like some of the Black Friday deals that are listed now, it's ten dollars off for the physical. So why would you pay? Why would you pay forty dollars for a digital copy when the physical copy is going to be for the same price? Yeah, like it, it, it's not a good deal, and it is slowly trying to push you forward to a digital age. And then the whole thing that the Nintendo Online membership which I don't even think Nintendo should be charging. The only reason they're doing it is because shit's off. Microsoft and <laughs> Sony are doing the same thing. Sony right? soft. And my, yeah, Sony soft. Sony no, soft. I, literally, I, I always called them the 4K twins, but I love that, Phil. I'm still yeah. that. Yeah, because it's like Microsoft started charging first. And then Sony had like PS3, they didn't charge for it. It was kind of this thing where it's like, oh, well, you can have the membership, but it's not mandatory. PS4 rolls out, it was a mandatory. And now Nintendo's gotten the bandwagon. And Microsoft raised their price. Sony changed their infrastructure. They raised their price. Nintendo kind of raised their price a little bit. Now they're offering some classic games with it, but you can't buy those classic games digitally. 
And why isn't there physical collections of them, like the Mario 3D collection? Where is the seat? Where is the follow up to that too? Because uh, uh, Mario Galaxy Two isn't even on there. So, like, I, I don't understand. They have the ability to put out some amazing physical collections of classic games, and they won't do it. Amen. And you can't trust Nintendo when it comes to their digital games because they don't really let you have access to them. Like with the like you said with the Wii to the Wii U. And I I don't want to pump a bunch of money into digital on a locked ecosystem. Yep. I mean I have I have, but to me, digital games don't have a lot of value. If it's not like maybe. 15 or below i i'm probably not i'm more like the 10 to 5 dollar range for digital uh but honestly it's it, nintendo sony i i want them to stay true to themselves i don't want them to chase the western mentality and the microtransaction subscription based services that Microsoft is pushing us to. And I know I lament so much about Microsoft, and it sounds like I'm an Xbox hater, but it that's not the case. It's like Microsoft is at the forefront of all of this, just like Valve was with <laughs> Steam on PC, and PC don't have physical games anymore. So it's important to see the person that's starting the fire that is going to come become a massive forest fire and stop them before it spreads. So, yeah, I mean, I, I want Nintendo to have a great, uh, great future with the next system. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I just hope it ends up being something that we can enjoy and we have physical games, but we have to wait and see. So what do you guys think about these console bundles that they've been announcing the last couple of days uh, through Nintendo, you know, stuff for the holidays? Uh, what's the story with those guys? I think it looks like a shit repurposed. Like literally, uh, uh, this, this, the, Mar the Smash Bros one, right? All they did was take the old Joy-Cons they had from like three years ago, whenever that first Smash bundle was out. And they stick it in a box with an OLED, and then they give you a digital code, and they say, "There you go, that's it." Or, or let's talk about that that Mario, uh, what was it, the Mario Wonder one or whatever, and it was just a red switch, and then all there was was like some Mario icons and a secret little compartment that you could pop open that you would <laughs> never see if you didn't remove. I, what happened to console bundles? Like they don't have physical games with them anymore. And the designs are so lazy and minimalistic and, and shitty. Like where's the translucent colors or the cool designs for the, the Game Boys and the DSs and stuff at? Like, where is that? Like, yeah. I miss that. What do you think, Zoo? Well, I'm very, I'm, I guess I'm very confused because they call it a bundle but yet there's no game in the bundle so like i i, I you got me I, why would you buy a bundle if there's no game attached um i guess is what i would say but um now let general, me tell you that this is something that got shoehorned in quite a long time ago because if you remember with the 2ds's and the wii's that came preloaded with mario kart oh yeah, yeah. so that's okay. So there's not a code, but you only have it digitally. And I think it hurts extra for something like Smash Brothers, because like Phil pointed out earlier, right, that Nintendo physical games do not devalue really. So if you had an actual Smash Brothers game, a year from now, you can still probably sell that for $30, $40, $50, but your code is worthless. Oh, yeah. I, I waited three years to buy Mario Odyssey at 30 bucks. And, and by the way, by the way, Black Friday, this Black Friday, Donkey Kong is finally going to be $30. Nintendo's going out of business, everybody. <laughs> Donkey Kong and Kirby are going to be $30, and those physicals are going to sell out like that. Because when Mario Odyssey was 30 one Black Friday a couple of years ago, Thanksgiving, Man, it was like at Target or something, completely sold out. I went yeah. out to eat Thanksgiving dinner, 
with my brother, and we were going to head over there afterwards, completely sold out. Yeah, Did not um, get it. Basically, what's happening, and again, I, I was being kind of a smart ass because to me, a digital game's not a game at all. It doesn't exist. But um, really, what they're doing is they're clearing out old stock. They they do this yeah. literally every year. And it's just a way to clear out old stock. That way they can get new units produced. And keep in mind, that's going to go on an investor report. Every system sold, they don't give a shit about the game attached. That's really to pump up that system sold number. They desperately want to beat the DVD player. Yeah. Um, and again, they're never going to do it once you factor in population growth, but they don't have to factor in population growth because of the way reporting works in this dumb fucking industry. Nobody takes that into account. They're just going to report, OMG, the Switch outsold the DVD player. That's what they're all <laughs> going to say, because what the fuck is population growth? We don't know math. We're fucking game journalists. But um, basically, that's that's what's going on there. It's literally just trying to stack as many Nintendo Switch units in the holiday as they can. Yeah. Now, I would argue it's a bad strategy because people want the physical game. But Nintendo seems to think this is a cheap way to do it. But I'm far more interested in, you know... <laughs> Digital games and the way digital games come prepackaged and they're chunked out, I actually think that, you know, um, as we more and more go toward, go toward digital games and we more and more go toward these cartridges as code in a box bullshit where there's zero data on them and it downloads everything, but it actually can pose a very big problem for game companies. Like they think of it as a win, but they're, again, they're so short sighted. It's actually taking gaming outside the real world, and it's making the game industry think it can do things it can't do. And what I'm talking about is being able, they think they're able to have multiple first starts. You only get one first impression. Video games are a momentum-based business, right? The most you're going to sell, I don't care if you're Zelda or I don't care if you're Mario, the, the most you're ever going to sell is that right out the gate, right? And in the real world, you only get one start. Look at sports. Look at something like track and field. If you start too early, you get the false start, you're out of there. Video games are the same. It's a momentum-based business. If the video game comes out and it's not worth a shit and there's a million bugs and there's game crashes and it's not ready, if you if video games have a false start, you're out. Look at Grand Theft Auto 3. Those sales never recovered. And it doesn't matter if the patches are wonderful. It doesn't matter that you think you get second and third and fourth and fifth and sixth chances with the consumer. Um, you don't. You get one chance with paying customers. So this online downloading shit is giving game manufacturers the idea that they have more than one first impression, and it's not true. So in the end, I, I again, I think it's very <laughs> short-sighted, and I ultimately think it's going to bite them in the ass hard. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like uh, this these console bundles is just the last push for Nintendo to make money before they drop the next console. And I only have a Switch Lite. I don't have an OLED. I don't have a proper Switch to play on the TV at all. And I'm just, at this point, I don't think it's really wise to invest one um, because I feel like the next console is coming. And this is Nintendo's last hurrah to get money real quick. Uh, I, I could be wrong. I don't have any insider knowledge, but it really feels like it's about to drop. They've been saying and that for seven years, Philly. I mean, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I feel like it is. And but but you gotta I'm look wrong. at every maybe every I'm time. Wrong. Hey, a, every time RGT eighty five makes a Switch two video, they push it back three days. So <laughs> at this point, at this point, good luck ever getting a Switch two out. As much as that guy makes fucking Switch two videos. So I mean, yeah, oh guys, I have no problem with Nintendo. You know, cleaning out their closet of old Joy Cons or, or Switch consoles. Yeah. Uh, but that whole, uh, you know, you get a game, uh, it's just a code, guys. So you cannot trade that in that has no monetary value for you. Uh, you don't control and the, it. And, you don't control it. And then it. the packaging on the box, it's like, well, what am I going to do with this shit? There's no game in here. and But it's advertised right on it. And it's like, can I get a like a cardboard thing and then try to make my a, a, my own slot for my physical game to go in there <laughs> so it's a real console bundle? Like, who's going to take the time to do that? <laughs> uh, I, more and more, I be like me. That's what I tell gamers. Be like me. If the game isn't physically out, it doesn't exist. Just be like me. It yeah. saves you so much time on games anyway. Just, if it's not out physically, it doesn't exist. Well, I mean, I agree with that to a point, but there is some small indie titles that you really could miss out on. Uh, games that I've had a lot of fun with that didn't get physicals. Or for someone like me who doesn't really feel comfortable 
ordering through like limited run places or right. even no, the online period um you know some games only get their physical through those places so like that's kind of out of the question for me so sometimes like i have to do it digitally and sometimes right. everyone does because if, if the game doesn't get picked up by somebody then yeah that's true. i I, I just don't play it guys I'm, I'm not kidding but, uh, i just don't play it <laughs> but but another good uh, another side to that to add to what jay said is buying digital could actually be a, a way of uh preserving your games in a sense so like like maybe you don't want like uh, maybe you have um the old like ps1 copy or sega dream you know whatever console that has the old resident evil right but you don't want to keep wearing out that disc because it's old and it's not durable like a like a blu-ray disc right so you buy the digital copy or you emulate it on like PC or whatever it is so that you could experience it, but keep your old copy pristine or keep your game in good condition. Or maybe you have that? a really rare game and you don't want to open it because, well, it was in the backlog forever okay. and then the price jumped up. And if you open it, you're going to lose $200. So you buy the digital to play it. I can understand that. I can understand that. Phil, so Phil just gave me... Yeah, Phil, you just gave me probably the best case I've ever heard for digital games. That's a hell of a college drive. Well, and, and I agree there too because I've actually done it a, a Damn, couple times good. for convenience, especially yeah. if the digital game went on sale. Like I may have the physical game, but I hate, especially as someone who does variety streaming, and I stream three or four mm -hmm. nights a week, different games. Right. Uh, if I can on sale catch a fifty dollar game for fifteen twenty bucks, it might be worth the convenience for me to do that and double dip, but that's like a first world problem. Ma yeah. Many people don't have the money to do that. Uh, but yeah. I definitely see as someone who does not love digital, uh, what Phil said, preserving your hard copies. Yeah. And then for convenience, yeah, I like, in my case, maybe uh, sometimes it's okay. Well, I'll especially honest, with, with NAND based car cartridges, because a NAND based cartridge, um, every time you read that cartridge, like unless you continue to reflash it, which a switch does, but, that's also wear and tear on your NAND cartridge. It's not like yeah. the old EPROMs, which literally could last through a freaking nuclear blast. Like these have a limited shelf life. Yeah, yeah. very true. Yeah, Maybe. and uh, like I, I have some games that uh, at this point I don't think I could bear to open it because if I open it, it's like so much value. And if I ever was in a situation where I needed to sell something to help out family or to get out yeah. of a sticky situation. I know that my physical games can help me do that. And that's one thing people need to realize that physical games, you shouldn't use it as like a way to make money. I, I mean, maybe you can, but if you have something that does have value and your game collection does have value, it can help you out in tough times. It really can. I've 100%. had so many people over the years that had to sell their physical games to pay for hospital bills or help a family or they were in like a an accident or something so it's it, it's nice to have that but with digital you can't sell that you know i, <laughs> can, no, I completely agree a lot of our friends and, and i agree with it have said that video games are not necessarily a smart investment but it is good to have that fallback yes. um, you know if i really run into hard times with a little work, I can generate thousands of dollars easily. Full disclosure: yeah. this is not this is not financial or economic advice. So, full disclosure: I will never tell somebody that video games are an asset investment. What I will tell people is that just about anything you dump dollars into will be worth more than your dollars in the consistently and constantly inflation environment. This is a consistently increasing inflation environment. And we are 10% up, I think, from the last time it was calculated. Um, as, the dollar, as the dollar is worth less, anything you're buying is going to be worth more than that dollar. Um, now, there are some things that are worth a whole fucking lot more than plastic cases and video game cartridges. But <laughs> again, what you, what you should absolutely, again, not financial or economic advice, in my personal opinion, if you're holding on to dollars, if you're not dumping dollars into something else that can make you money or enjoy, you're doing it wrong. Do not hold on to dollars in this environment. Invest in first party Nintendo games. <laughs> <laughs> not financial advice, folks.
<laughs> uh, also, uh, another advice. Buy fill one up clicks video games retro ones <laughs> because I need more of those and they're stupid expensive and Good I don't times. want to buy them myself. <laughs> Good times. So right, we got so about that's... three minutes left. Uh, I want each one of us to kind of give a little final thought on uh, how do we fix this? What do you think, Zoo? How can we steer the ship in the right direction for the game industry and game collecting? Um. I mean, one of the things I'll mention just briefly is that, you know, especially for people on the PC, we've got to start rethinking what we mean by physical games. I posed this question to uh, Nintendo Revised, and he he relented to it. I said, hey, if I've got an SD card that has Baldur's Gate 3 on it, is that not a physical copy? And he basically is like, yeah, I would think so, since you can literally take that where to another computer. And say, yep, it's it's DRM free. It's on a, It's on an SD card. That's a physical copy. So really, the only thing we can do is to continue to push back against it vocally. And honestly, I don't think I think gamers have Stockholm syndrome. I don't think they're going to. I think we're at the Alamo and I'm basically prepping for my second exit out of this hobby. Basically, that's what I'm doing with the switch. OK, Bill, what do you say? Uh, the best thing that you can do is to vote with your wallet and uh Really make your uh, feelings heard. If you don't like certain things, uh, reach out, and speak your mind, do it politely. Don't uh, don't be too rude and ranty. I know I can be rude and ranty sometimes, but yeah, don't, just don't be try <laughs> and just just try to do it in the best way you can. Uh, because it's not about a console war thing. It's about making this community and this ecosystem better. So we have to work together. We have to. We have to. That's the only way things can get better. Absolutely. Uh, so my final thought on it is, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they talk about voting with your wallet, uh, they're talking about denial, um, not buying things. Uh, I kind of like to think of it uh, from another perspective. I think that you should vote with your purchases. And right now, and this, I'm not a Nintendo fanboy, but it seems like right now, Nintendo is making the most right choices. And if they continue mm -hmm. to do that, they will continue to have my almost exclusive support. So I do think that there's some people that we should turn our backs on, but I say that we should continue to support the companies like Premium and the companies like Nintendo who seem to be making the right choices. Yeah. Are they perfect? No. But if you can look at the three competitors and not see that Nintendo is the most pro-consumer, then I think you're out of your mind. But I know we all want what's best and we'll all continue to work for that. We love this community. Uh, what I want to see is unity in the community. I don't want to see fanboys arguing. I don't want to see arguments about these things. We should come together and see how we can maybe impact the future in this industry. So I thank everyone for listening. Thank you, Phil. Phil 1UP Collects on YouTube and Twitter. Thank you, Zoo, Flipping the Switch, and Happy Wanderer on YouTube and Twitter. And as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, guys... Stay, Stay creepy. creepy. Bye, guys. <laughs>